So this is not the actual bar because there is no bar. Which uh, kind of scares me. <laughs> what a fantastic start to Hermanfest, don't you think? <laughs> Are you best behaved? <laughs> I think my eyebrows have been singed. Woo! Ella, 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 Ella. I haven't got any yet. I'm running out of balls. This year, Hermafest is at Tucker's Grave Inn in Somerset, and it is a traditional English pub, you know, unchanged, unspoilt, that kind of thing. It is from the mid 17th century, and uh, they sell beer and cider straight from the keg, so none of this pump stuff, and there's no bar. It's, the barrels are just laid out underneath the windowsill. Now, why the name though, Tucker's Grave Inn? Bit of a strange name, don't you think? Well, back in the day, in the 17th to 18th century, suicides weren't permitted to be buried in hallowed ground, you know, like churchyards and that kind of thing. Instead, they were buried in unmarked graves at crossroads. Now, on the 5th of June, 1747, some guy called Edward Tucker, hanged himself at a barn about a mile away south from here and uh, after the coroner uh, inquiry uh, he was buried they believe he was buried at the crossroads where tucker's grave in is let's have a wander around and i'll show you this amazing campsite that they've got here and this is where you check in it's not quite a reception area but if it is closed you need to check in at the pub this is Oak Field. They have four electric hookup points. This sloping field is called Sleepy Hollow. This is the Upper Brook Field. This is Lower Brook, which goes into Wellow Brook. And uh, all the way along here is where we're going to have Herman Fest. This is the barn where they're going to be playing live music on that very stage just there. And right between Sleepy Hollow and the Upper Brookfields is this magnificent brand new facility block. I can tell it's brand new. Not only does it smell like brand new wood, but they haven't finished off the grey waste section yet. And I can tell you that the toilets and the showers are magnificent. And you've got this amazing, lovely banister here overlooking the whole campsite. And there's us just there. Look. There's Herman and the early arrivals of Herman Fest. So we've got quite a lot of room for our 60 odd vans, uh, but of course there are other groups arriving as well. So we're gonna to have to be sharing the space. And over the course of the weekend, we have some balloon launches. It's gonna be happening every day, I think I just heard. So uh, that's gonna be exciting. And they're just gonna be happening, most likely I've been told, over in that field over there. But so not in the campsite, but uh, that's going to be it's going to be a good start to Hermafest, I think. Right, I'm going to take you inside now and I'll show you around. So we go for this low door, and it gets really narrow in here, but then opens out. To the left, we have a nice little room, another nice drinking area here. So this is not the actual bar, because there is no bar, but this is where we get served our drinks. So you've got loads of, couple of kegs of beer down the bottom here. But look at this selection of ciders. And some of them, their own cider look. And I've just got, picked up a pint of Mother Tucker. Off to the beer garden. Ooh. Now all we got to do is uh, sit down, relax, and wait for everyone to arrive. It is Friday morning and it's still quite early. Now, over the course of yesterday, we have had quite a few vans arrive. Uh, 16 of us now at, in the uh, campsite. And uh, we've had a jolly good time last night, having a chin wag and getting to know each other, that kind of stuff. But today is the, I say the official start of Herman Fest, and uh, we're going to get about between 40 to 50 vans arriving today, about 50 couples arriving. 
which uh, kind of scares me <laughs> because I'm imagining that they're going to be coming in from the road dead on 12 when everyone's allowed to arrive and there's going to be a huge queue going out of the gate all the way up the road and causing a huge traffic jam but I'm sure that's not going to happen. So let me tell you what's been happening today. Myself and Zoe and some others like Ian, thanks Ian, have been guiding people in to find their parking spots for the weekend for Hermanfest. It's been exciting, it's been interesting, meeting lots of people. Last time I counted, there were 50. I think two others just come in. So you're up to 52 and it's only Friday. Well, in the end, we had 58 vans in total, which is another record for Hermanfest. There were other groups camping, including the folks doing the hot air balloons, which made Tucker's Grave Inn a very popular place to be. It was chock-a-block with cars, campers, people and balloons and it was buzzing with excitement and wonder. It is now the evening, it's coming up to 8 o'clock and the balloons have launched. There's one and there's, I can just see on the horizon just over there, over the, where the, uh, the facility block is, they're launching from the field over the other side of the road. Now it looks like they're having problems with the other balloons so I've got my bike pump and I'm gonna go over there and see if they need any assistance. Look how close they are together. That black and white one in the middle certainly looks like it needs a um, bit of assistance pumping up doesn't it? That's another one off. How exciting. We've got two others going off as well. Right above me now. Oh let's see now we've got a tree in the way. You can see how fast they're moving. And look at all these people. Most of them have their camera phones out because it's not something you actually see every day, is it? And of course, we have to have the drones out as well. Wow, that is a huge flame coming out of that burner there. All right, it's got to be 10 meters long, definitely. This one here has got no basket. He's... <laughs> He, he's just on his own kind of jetpacking it as it were. What a fantastic start to Hermafest, don't you think? I mean it's got nothing to do with Hermafest or anything I've organised, it's all to do with the campsite and the inn. So yeah, and it's going to happen again tomorrow, so it's just amazing. So we have one more to take off, it does look like it's struggling, so whether or not it will, I don't know, going to need that bike pump. Oh, here it goes. The last one has finally taken off. Oh, I hadn't realised they actually have registration numbers on them as well, look. Oh, that's going to go right over me. Wow, I can see right inside there. Oh, reminds me of Zoe, really, full of hot air. We are halfway through Saturday and uh, we have now, we are now in the middle of Herman Scruffs, as you can see. People are walking around with their doggies, just for fun. So we've got five categories, including best of show. So here are our judges. Here comes Sprat. Is she alive? Um, <laughs> just about. Hello. She is, she's alive. Harry is the winner of the uh, cutest doggy. And Milo was the winner of the waggiest tail. So there's Max, he's won the scruffiest dog. I think it's controversial really because I think <laughs> it's also the cutest but we couldn't Thank have him <laughs> I think it should be Sprat again and Sprat over yes. there. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll sit if I was given a treat as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lots of R's coming from the uh, judges. <laughs> Immediate, everyone, immediately that was. <laughs> you best behaved! <laughs> oh, look. So this is the best behaved dog, Zoe's going to announce the winner. They didn't have any treats to kind of, you know, trick the judges. And it's his lovely darling. Yeah. yeah. Paddy won the best behaved doggy. Hello. Well done. There was a, there was a Jack wins the naughtiest dog. Well done. Okay, so the best in show. It's been really difficult.
difficult. But the judges have come to an agreement, yeah? It's Milo. There's Milo, best in show. Hello, Milo. So while we were having Herman Scruffs, they inflated this huge lion. And the registration number is G Leet, as in Long Leet, I'm, I'm thinking. Ah. A few more going up, look, little balloons. Whoa, I can feel that. I think my eyebrows have been singed. Whoo! It's coming down on me. Being chased by a lion. Saturday evening, we gathered together and brought homemade food to share with each other. And we had some amazing foods such as savory quiches, pasta, rice, or couscous salads, cakes, cookies, Sylvia's very popular Rocky Road, a Guinness cake, which I missed out on, and a cheese and pineapple hedgehog. After some grub, we had a fun quiz. Hydroplane into fame. No one? Anyone? Rhiannon featuring Jay Z, whoever they are. Umbrella. <laughs> Ella. Ella. <laughs> well, that's not part of the quest. The song goes like this Ella, 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 on my brolly. History, number 13. In which year did the Battle of Waterloo take place? It says here, quarter past six. 1815. And then we had the chance to win an EcoFlow power station with a full house of bingo, where we raised £335 for the charity Dementia UK. The bingo calls had a camping theme as well. Electric hookup 24. Forest of Dean 14. See that rhymes. That was a good one. <laughs> Thanks for the enthusiasm. Bob Earnshaw 54. <laughs> Is anyone close? Yeah, is anyone close? I haven't got any yet. Got any yet. <laughs> I'm running out of balls. <laughs> A bottle of blue. Number two. <laughs> Tickle me 65. You got it? <laughs> well done. Well done, hiker. Oh, look at that. Hello. Do you want to play bingo? That's it from us. We've done the quiz, we've done the bingo. You didn't get your guitar. I'm not getting, I'm not going to subject them to uh, I was playing the guitar in uh, Devizes no, last weekend and I was learning these new chords and they were quite tricky because I'm having to use a little finger now. And uh, I was playing and I'm trying to do this song. When I looked up after 10 minutes, the neighbours had all gone. And it was weather like this, and you think, you don't want to be indoors. So I got the hint. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Now for some music. It is Sunday, it is the last day of Herman Fest and people are starting to vacate the campsite and come up to us and say goodbye. Now, I've got a bit of a thing for you. How many Herman Festers does it take to change a fuse? Four, apparently. <laughs> anyway, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.